I see so many people making the same white balance mistakes over and over and I've been guilty of it myself in the past if I'm honest because it can get quite confusing and there's a lot of misinformation online. The thing is, not setting your white balance properly will make it so much harder to colour grade and your videos will end up looking like amateur college projects. Sorry for anybody that's at college, but you know what I mean. But this is why it's so important to avoid these five mistakes and understand white balance so you can get better looking shots straight out of camera. I'll also show you the secret methods that the pros use to get cinematic looking edits. So by the time you finish watching this video, you'll be so much more confident when it comes to your camera settings. Different light sources have different colour temperatures, ranging from warm or orange to cool or blue. Setting your white balance tells your camera what temperature light is being used and make sure that your whites in your image look white. And then when white is balanced or corrected, all the other colours look like they should. In turn, making it easier to colour grade. Colour temperature is measured in kelvins, with warmer light sources around 1800 kelvin to 3200 kelvin on one end of the scale and cooler light between 6500 and 10,000 on the other end. Where I was going wrong with these graphs is I would used to think of it as a scale from morning to evening and also that the blue sky on this end meant a sunny blue sky day when actually none of that's right at all. When the sun rises it starts off warm and as it goes over to midday it brightens up and goes into the cooler spectrum or the white spectrum but then when the sun sets it goes warmer again so it goes back down. When the sun's completely gone and you get an evening sky that's when it goes blue and that's when you use these upper kelvin. The most common mistake people make is using auto white balance and I'm using it now and you'll probably see throughout this clip. And I know it can be quite scary when you first get a new camera and enter in the world of settings but your shots will look so much better when you shift into manual mode. Your camera is constantly changing the white balance to match the lighting conditions. And in uncontrolled environments, colours alter when your lighting conditions change and you can see it happening now look. Just a small 45 degree angle movement alters the colours dramatically. And that means your colour grade is going to be all over the place. because it's shifting it looks really unnatural and it can be distracting for the viewer. If you're a beginner and you're scared of selecting your white balance manually my advice would be to start using a white balance card and let your camera do it for you. Setting your white balance any old how and just thinking I'll fix it in post is really bad practice because you can't always fix it in post. Cameras are getting a lot better at capturing colour data but there's still only so far you can push the colours before the image deteriorates and your colours start to look all weird and bizarre. Plus it's unnecessary time spent working on your colour correction when you could be using that time working on your colour grade or your overall edit. So every time you switch on your camera you need to get into the habit of checking your exposure and setting your white balance. People often rush and miss this crucial step and it's actually the thing that hurts your colour grade the most and that's when people start to think I'm not very good at colour grading but actually it's the steps that they take before that they need to improve on and it's as simple as setting your white balance. When you're outside filming and you're doing a job you have to be really quick. Lighting conditions change all the time and you're swapping out lenses and filters but the mistake we often make is forgetting to set the white balance after every lens or filter change and this is quite significant because if you think about it every new element element you place in front of the camera's sensor is going to change the colour somehow. So you need to get into the habit of setting your white balance after your filters and your lenses are added. If a lamp or a tungsten light sits around 3200 Kelvin, then we should set our camera temperature to 3200 Kelvin, right? Wrong. If you do this, those colours will end up looking white and unnatural because it's not meant to look white, it's a warmer light source. So instead, move the camera's white balance up to around 4500 Kelvin in between daylight and tungsten because you want those lamps or candles to look natural and warm. In real life, your whites don't look white under this sort of light, so why would you want it to look white in the camera? So this is the example where you wouldn't balance the whites to be white. When people hear that 5600 Kelvin is daylight temperature, they'll set their white balance at 5600 in the day, regardless of what time of day it is or what the conditions are, leave it at that and carry on filming. But it's not as straightforward as this, unfortunately. Light changes throughout the day and it also depends on the conditions of the weather. Whether it's cloudy, sunny, blue sky, overcast, morning, noon or evening, it all makes a massive difference. So it's important to have some sort of baseline to work from. And here's what I find works best for me in uncontrolled outdoor situations. Sunrise and sunset tends to be warmer, so somewhere between 4500 and 5600 Kelvin, but I quite like the warmer look, so I prefer to set it towards the higher end of those two. When it's sunny in the daytime, anywhere from 5600 to 6200 looks nice, but it does depend on which way you're facing. I find myself going for 
around 6,000. But if I spin around and have the sun behind me, then I tend to go for around 7,000 because then I'm kind of in the shade. If it's cloudy or overcast, 6,500 or 7,500 looks nice. If I'm in the shade, around 7,000 looks good. If it's blue sky in the evening after the sun's gone down, 7,500 and upwards. The later it gets, you might have to go higher. The thing is though, sometimes you want it to look like it's been filmed in the evening. So if you do balance it and go all the way up, the whites are gonna look white and it's not gonna look like it's filmed in the evening, it'll look like it's been filmed in the day. So rather than balancing it perfectly, you might want to bring the camera white balance to the warmer end to make it look a little bit bluer like it's the evening. My advice is to do some tests of your own and figure out which settings work best for you and your camera. And as well, try and train your eye to the LCD screen on your camera and you'll get better at setting your white balance by eyeballing it. Now, you're not always gonna be perfect, but getting somewhere close will mean that you only have to make a few minor corrections. For natural looking lighting in a controlled environment like this, use a 5600 Kelvin light and then match your camera's white balance to that light at 5600. This will kind of give you the most balanced looking colors. But don't forget, it's not always about balancing the whites it's about making it look the way you want it to so if in any situation you want the image to look warmer tell your camera that the light source is cooler and it'll compensate by warming up the image and vice versa if you want the image to look cooler tell the camera you're using a warmer source and then it will look cooler Depending on where you stood, light can reflect all over the place and that can create green or pink tints in your shot. Now I'm stood near a bunch of trees which is reflecting green light onto my face and I can compensate for this by adding more pink in the camera. And this works the opposite way as well, if the image looks too pink, just add a little bit more green. Now the thing with this is you don't have to mess too much unless there's a huge shift in colour. And if you've done a good job of balancing your whites in the first place, then you'll only need a tiny little shift in post. As I mentioned earlier, this is only one piece of the puzzle. If you really want to take your videos to the next level and get cinematic grade footage, you need to think about something else before setting the white balance. Because without it, your shots might not have the right contrast and your colours may not be saturated enough or too dark, making it impossible to colour grade. And that's why you should watch this video here because it's going to make what you've just learned 10 times more reliable.